Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name's Emily Polak, and I'm a researcher at the International Institute for Environment and Development, IAED. Um, and we're hosting this afternoon's webinar. And I'd really like to welcome everyone to this fifth webinar in the series that we're running at the moment on approaches to empowering producers in commercial agriculture. Uh, and it's fantastic. So many people could join us today. Uh, a lot of people have registered. Um, there's interest in this uh, and it's a, it's a critical issue. So this webinar series uh, on empowering producers in commercial agriculture uh, is supported by a four year project led by IAD, uh, but in collaboration with partners in Nepal and Malawi. And it's funded by UK Aid in connection with uh, Commercial Agriculture for Smallholders and Agribusiness Programme, or CASA. Um, so you can find out more on either of those uh, by contacting us and through the links on, on uh, the channels you reach this webinar by. A key part of this endeavour, uh, this webinar series uh, and of the, the, the project as a whole, is gathering evidence from around the world and testing approaches on how producers are exercising agency to address challenges in their value chain relations. So it's starting from the producer. And, and for example, approaches to address information and power asymmetries and approaches that support producers to be in the driving seat or at least to be engaging and interacting with public and private sector actors from, from a position of strength or a stronger position than they might otherwise have been in. Uh, and it's about producers and their wider communities looking also at household level um, and, and social differentiation. Uh, we're very pleased today to be hosting a group of panelists who are going to share their experiences of a Kenyan based social enterprise uh, that has been for the past decade seeking to disrupt business as usual in the coffee sector. Um, Vava Coffee began operations in 2009 and now has a rich experience of seeking to tackle barriers to an inclusive, fair and sustainable coffee sector. Uh, Vava Coffee is of course now facing unprecedented conundrums uh, from COVID-19, like the rest of us and like many other um, enterprises, uh, businesses, investors uh, and uh, we're interested to know what that is meaning, what that is telling us about their relationship with producers uh, and how producers can continue to have a voice uh, and, uh, and um, overcome the challenges we're facing. So this webinar will, will tread a path between what lessons have been generated by the work of Vava Coffee with a sharp focus on, on women and youth um, over the past decade. Uh, and then also, on the other hand, the options and strategies for sustaining this work to strengthen producers, a, producer agency in their value chain uh, in the pandemic context and beyond. Um, IID is not directly involved in this initiative. This series is a learning event uh, to generate lessons from different cases and contexts. So we bring you this in the spirit of mutual exchange and learning. And we very much invite you to share your insights and experiences and pose questions relevant to this discussion following the panel. Uh, so without further ado, I'd now like to introduce our panel who will take you through the key components of the work that, that they do, the progress uh, and then challenges currently being faced and, and maybe some lessons for others, both uh, kind of out of the COVID context, but also uh, what's happening now and, and how we might move through it as an international community. So first, Vava Angwenyi will give us an overview presentation. And Vava is the creator of Vava Coffee, uh, which is a sp social enterprise that trades, roasts and consults on coffee value chains. Its main aim is to contribute to better future prospects for coffee communities and the industry as a whole. So that will be our key presentation to understand uh, more from Vava Coffee uh, and their experiences. And following that overview, we'll hear from two panelists connected to um, the initiative to, to hear reflections from their perspective. Brian Morare is a young Kenyan farmer, age 23, and current farm manager intern at Vava Coffee, 
Brian is currently heading the Kisaju Kipeto Organic Food Project. So Brian's going to reflect on his understanding of some of the social inclusion dynamics in the coffee sector and also what he hopes to gain from engaging in the youth entrepreneurship mentoring scheme that is offered by Vava Coffee, but, but currently on hold, as I understand it, due to the pandemic. Holly Kragiopoulos is owner and director of North Star Coffee Roasters, a coffee roastery academy and coffee shop based in Leeds in the UK and a buyer of Vava Coffee. It's a business focused on quality and ethics, showcasing some of the greatest specialty coffee grades from around the world and investing in communities across the coffee lands. Holly founded North Star in 2013 and is responsible for managing producer relationships. So Holly's going to share some reflections about her relationship with Vava Coffee and particularly now how they're seeking to be flexible and adaptable in the context of in this case, the UK government's lockdown measures um, to sustain the relationship to, to suppliers and to the producers behind them. So unfortunately, under the current circumstances, we're not able to have a coffee producer with us on the panel due to movement restrictions and, and internet challenges. Um, but we're delighted to have these speakers join us and we look forward to hearing their perspectives. So uh, without further ado, I'd like to hand over to uh, our presenter today, Vava Nguyenyi, to take us through the Vava Coffee experience. Uh, and I look forward to uh, sharing this with you and the discussion that follows. Thank you. Thank you, Emily. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, and thank you, IEED, for hosting um, this webinar today. So, um, I'll move uh, swiftly, I'll, I'll say, through the presentation to allow, um, I'll say, sufficient time maybe for Q&A and for my other panelists to also share their stories. But I'll just quickly touch on uh, why we do what we do. Um, and as Emily uh, briefly uh, mentioned, we are a, a B Corp, um, which is basically a benefit corporation with a social enterprise model and have been in this sector for, for 10 years now. Um, and I also, I mean, today I'll also touch on a bit of the work that I also do with my other organization, Hente del Futuro, which um, has done quite a bit of work on women and youth um, within the region and in Latin America, and hence taking some of those learnings and fusing them into uh, current scenarios that we're faced with. Um, so having started on this journey, um, 10 years ago, it's definitely not been an easy ride, but I can say that um, uh, the failures and the lessons learned have been better than any MBA class that I've been a part of. So I wouldn't, uh, despite all the challenges that we're faced with, I really would not um, choose um, another career. So I'm grateful for all the experiences. Now within the coffee sector, we've got um, different, um, various players and everyone's been affected in different ways. Um, today I'll touch more on um, the folks that we work with um, very closely which are uh, the producing communities but also what our business has been faced with uh, be it in logistics issues and uh, being a trader as well how um, the current scenario has also impacted our business. Um, when we look at the producers, um, I would say this would be the most vulnerable um, um, uh, sector of folks um, within the supply chain. Um, because some of us do have like a fallback plan or better ways of shielding ourselves during this um, pandemic. However, say for producers, um, uh, especially because some producers are um, having their harvests happening Currently, uh, we see an increase in cost of production and extra costs which have to be incurred if they have to provide PPE to laborers and existing employees, as well as perhaps further investments in more drying beds. And some may also not be able to um, offset some of the loans they, they have outstanding uh, with some financial institutions. When it comes to our millers and marketers, they may have certain delays from certain clients and certain operational disruptions based on the curfew that we see 
and movement restrictions currently in place in Kenya. As for traders, which is where we fall um, uh, into play is, uh, well, there's given the, some knee-jerk reactions that we've had um, from various, be it clients, we could see a reduction in order volumes. Uh, in these times, it's also definitely tougher to sign on new clients because everyone in the world is affected by this situation. So any sort of expansion plans we had in terms of maybe increasing uh, volumes are, I mean, those are tough to come by in these um, times. Um, and also from various discussions we've been having with other um, industry players, be they coffee shop owners or roasters, we've seen people lose massive volumes in, in business. And we also see consumers un unable to experience that third place experience where they want to visit their favorite coffee shop and get a great coffee from um, a barista. Later on in this presentation, I'll touch a little on um, how or what we're doing as a business to um, still uh, have a positive impact on the community, as well as um, a couple of tips that we may share with others on, on, on this webinar. I want to lay the landscape a little on um, various coffee growing regions in Kenya. Primarily, these have been the central and Rift Valley regions. And the central regions cover mostly the Mount Kenya region and the eastern region, the eastern region being Embu, Meru, and the Mount Kenya region being Thika, Nyeri, Kiambu, and other parts. And then you've got Rift Valley, which um, covers Nandi, Kericho, and you've got the western parts of Kenya that also uh, grow coffee. Now, based on statistics that I came across from um, the Federation of Women Lawyers, when we look at land ownership um, in Kenya, we, we see that 94% of land is owned by men, 5% is owned jointly, and only 1% of land is actually owned by women. And then we also look at um, how many households are actually uh, headed by women, 32%, and 68% of households are headed by men, but I think we all know who actually heads those households uh, regardless of that. So another sort of data point that has influenced our work is when we look at age distribution in Kenya, majority of the population is under 35 years. And unemployment rates from past statistics have shown the unemployment rate in Kenya to be at 40%, but obviously with COVID affecting all economies, we should see this um, percentage rise over time. Now, looking at all these different data points, um, we decided as a business to um, create what we call a social value chain. Now, a social value chain is an analytic framework which combines a theory of change and, and also fusing a value chain analysis which helps companies to strategically assess their social objectives. We created a social value chain which then informs our activities as a company but also helps us keep on track in actually looking at whether we're actually having an impact on farming communities in this country. Now, our focus has been primarily on women and youth. Now, some people may ask, why women and youth? Well, agriculture being an important engine of any um, economy, in particular in Africa, uh, we've seen that there's a lot of barriers to entry um, when it comes to women and also youth. Uh, when it comes to land ownership, as well as um, capital, access to capital, and also just access to proper training to enable women and youth actually take up opportunities that present themselves in this, uh, be it in coffee or in agriculture in general. Now, during um, this pandemic that we're faced with, we're asking ourselves, how do we sustain the agency of women and youth um, in these times where both as business leaders and um, business leaders and people within the sector, we're faced with 
massive challenges and literally just trying to keep our heads above water. We realize that we are faced with um, a system failure in our economies, whereby we have 42% of Kenyans still living uh, under the poverty line and 36% of Kenyans connected to electricity, whereas in neighboring Uganda and Tanzania, we've got the statistics you see on your screen. And when we talk about environmental issues, we see that um, deforestation numbers are still pretty high. Now, despite what we're faced with, um, the world is still demanding better of all businesses. Now, in the past 20 years, we've seen companies um, try to um, sort of measure how they do good using certain certifications. But as the world demands better, we've, we've had to look for new ways to sort of measure what we do and how we do it. Hence, what I present as a better alternative for us even during this time is tools which have been provided by um, the B community. Now, what is a B corporation? Um, certified B corporations are businesses that meet the highest standards of verified social and environmental performance, public transparency, and legal accountability to balance profit and purpose. Um, and it looks at a business in the areas that you see on your screen, from governance to workers to community and environment. What you see on your screen currently is um, the Vava Coffee score. Uh, but of course, we've got our weak points where we still need a lot of work. However, this is a tool, an imp the impact assessment tools that are provided under B Corp are what we are currently utilizing to help us still monitor the work and how we engage with our community, be it producers and various other suppliers and the youth and, and women communities that we're trying to impact. I'll skip over the next couple of slides fairly quickly. Um, but some of the other benefits that we see being engaged in uh, the B community are a group of like-minded, um, be it CEOs or like-minded individuals who are still striving to do good despite and in spite of the challenges that we're faced with as a community. Now, faced with the various challenges um, that we see today, um, I'd like to talk about how we can turn the challenges into opportunities. And I think the role of um, leaders in these times is to ask um, ourselves, how can we innovate and how can we still motivate, be it uh, our employees and the community in which we engage in? Diversification is something that we've always um, trained and talked to our producers about. And in these times, um, part of what we've done as an organization is also delve into uh, projects around food security and how we can engage the youth in the community in learning better ways of farming, but also keeping them busy during these times. Hence, you know, delving into other um, I would say revenue streams for the organization, hence the Kisaju Kipeto organic food project that uh, Brian is currently um, heading. Um, the other is how do we continue engaging in sustainable coffee projects um, with the women who have previously been beneficiaries of our work. And the funny thing about sustainability is that it has to be sustained. So, um, We've had to sort of find smart ways of um, keeping things going and finding um, other ways of engaging coffee producers, be it uh, ways of having them increase in animal, animal husbandry and finding ways of having them produce biogas, but also looking at how we can perhaps build on value addition locally. And in as much as Kenya is not a coffee consuming country, it's just to drive that agenda in how do we um, entice local consumers into finally appreciating the coffee that's produced here and sort of tying that into also food and having that as an offering as a company whereby if folks are ordering our coffee locally, they can also get a, a food basket. 
So these are some of the innovative ways that we see we can still keep engaging positively in the community and increasing both local consumption of coffee, but also other ways that we've seen within our supply chain is how do we um, leverage on the partnerships we have, be it with folks like Holly um, at, at Nordstar, how do we share the stories of what, how we're being impacted in this COVID times and how do we share lessons amongst ourselves so that at least um, after this pandemic that our businesses are both there um, and we're all supporting each other through um, openly sharing what the challenges are, but also openly trying to find solutions. Because I honestly believe that despite all the negatives that have come with COVID, there's certainly opportunities that we can leverage as folks within the supply chain in um, coming up with smart collaborations that could boost all of us. Now, um, the other, I would say, bigger player in or thing we can leverage here is technology and social media. Uh, these are have proven to be very powerful tools in how we can remotely connect with not just producing communities, but folks around the world in storytelling and you know, telling what's happening within the community and seeing how these stories can help impact or bring about positive solutions. And also ensuring that um, through all of this, um, the most vul vulnerable um, uh, constituents of the community, especially women um, and youth are also protected because what we've seen um, also as a negative um, side effect to all of this is the levels of insecurity that have cropped up, um, uh, be it, um, I mean, in Kenya, we've had cases of police brutality, but also um, cases of women um, not feeling very safe, um, trying to beat the curfew and getting home. There have been those incidences, incidences of, of sexual abuse. So how do we all come together to ensure that um, we all come out of this on the other side um, in one piece? So with that, I think I've sort of um, come to my time and um, thank you. And I'd like to hand it over to the next panelist. Thanks. Thank you so much, Vava. And I should mention, my name is Thierry Berger. I'm an associate at IID, and I will be moderating uh, this event. I will now ask um, Holly if she would mind sharing her remarks uh, in relation to Vava's presentation, just five minutes, and then we'll give the floor to Brian. So Holly, over to you. Okay, thanks, Thierry. Um, yeah, so as my introduction kind of mentioned, I'm one of the directors and owners of a company called North Star Coffee Roasters. We're based in the UK and we're a relatively small, um, small business. We have a huge focus on very high quality coffee and service um, both wholesale clients from coffee shops, restaurants, bars, cafes, um, to also uh, an online community of home coffee enthusiasts. Um, I guess in this five minutes that I have, it is sort of, um, I'd quite like to comment firstly on how we have been impacted by COVID and therefore how our producing partners have been, will be impacted. Um, and a little bit about why we kind of choose to work with Vava um, and the work that she's doing, why we align ourselves so closely with those values um, when it comes to our sourcing for Kenya and Tanzania, uh, which is kind of the, the two origins that we currently work with Vava for. So um, very briefly, uh, like many businesses in um, our industry, um, with the kind of uh, situation just spiraling out of control with COVID, um, we found ourselves almost overnight having lost the majority of our, our kind of business, um, which was to supply wholesale customers in the hospitality industry, um, which really it did feel overnight kind of just closed its doors. Um, hopefully temporarily but we're kind of now starting to feel some repercussions that that may be a bit more longer term um and for us that was a really uh, terrifying situation um after kind of trying to build a business for the past seven years we really really identify with what Vava says about how 
challenging that is and although the challenges we face may have been different um you know it's it's certainly not been a kind of uh, an easy route to getting there to try and convince people that they need to pay more for their coffee that coffee um you know can be can be much more than just you know instant granules dissolved in hot water um, so yeah, really terrifying situation for us when uh, when the, the kind of impact of COVID really started to make itself known. Um, as Vavam uh, sort of stated in her presentation, obviously we are fortunate to be at the um, the kind of consumer end of the supply chain, and therefore um, are definitely more resilient. You know, to kind of facing issues like this and, and hopefully coming through the other side. We uh, we sort of took some time out and managed to to try and well really pivot the focus of our business to focus on online sales which we you know we already had a platform set up to do that um, it just became you know more important than ever that that, that was performing effectively um, and that meant you know that we could crucially sort of continue roasting beans and and making our way through through lots of forward contracted coffee stocks um, which was ultimately our probably one of our biggest concerns really when all of this started to hit was the question of how we would you know be able to buy um from the producers that we work with um you know this year um and and therefore make impact you know through our purchase as a small business that's the only tool that we have really to, is to to try and drive value back to the to the producer um and kind of increase the impact that we're actually able to have um so thankfully we are at a point of sort of maintenance i would say at the moment with the business that we we have through the online shop and we're utilizing this time to really try and communicate um issues like the the like bav has discussed really you know through our own social social media channels through reaching our customers who um you know arguably are, are facing issues of the of their own right now but you know it seems to be um in times of crisis like this we've seen in the past you know in times of economic decline that um the kind of rise of conscious consumerism has really um is, is something that hopefully we can take hope from that you know despite the the kind of challenge around um you know facing economy locally and uh, and internationally hopefully what will come out of this will be a, a greater appreciation for for kind of behaving in a more responsible way as a consumer um briefly just to, to touch on why we kind of work so closely with Vavra and why we share her mission to um sort of raise the profile of women and youth in the supply chain in coffee um I've stated obviously as a small business we're we're somewhat limited in the kind of financial impact that we can have through our purchasing uh, we're not we're not kind of a, by any means a, a big buyer of coffee um, in comparison to to some of the world's biggest coffee companies um, but we very very much believe that our our you know every every sort of dollar we spend on coffee we want it to have uh, maximum impact and maximum benefit um, for those who are responsible for growing it and are therefore kind of sustaining our entire industry um what's become known within the coffee industry over the past few years is that the average age of coffee farmers is is gradually increasing to around 55 years old um and you know that does present us with a kind of a bit of a question mark over the future of our industry and um, with a slightly aging population of producers um you know and more uh, more youth kind of being motivated to move out of rural areas into urban areas like leaving coffee behind the question has to be asked why is that happening um, and what kind of becomes clear to us is um, the industry as it is right now is very very volatile and um, the the kind of uh, pricing mechanisms that the coffee is is bought and sold under it you know dr drastically need updating um, climate change issues that producers are facing and is leaving them much more open to um, volatility environmentally um, and ultimately that's leading to a situation where coffee farming is not really attractive you know to sort of stay within um, the other kind of uh, principle around all of this is obviously the the theory of agency um, and producers having agency and, and essentially control over their their business um, so the question is how do we kind of ensure producers are looking at, at what they do as a business and ensuring that they feel engaged and empowered in what they do to put them in a stronger position um, and take a bit more control over their own supply chain and um, so that's just touching on the youth um, aspect women obviously um, the partnership gender equity sort of has found that 90% of every dollar earned by a woman will be spent back on the household and on the family where only for, as in comparison to 40% um, 
in comparison to um, dollars earned by males. Um, and therefore, you know, it's in this manner that we feel coffee can be a, a huge opportunity for um, community development economically. And that's kind of where we see the potential in, in what we do. If we can ensure um, women are able to access more, uh, more money from their supply chain that they are all too often um, solely kind of responsible for in terms of harvesting, you know, um, mulching, pruning, picking, everything. Um, they're currently denied huge access from the market and that's something that we feel um, if, if we could try and change and, and, and turn around, you know, that, that ultimately the impact economically could be huge. Um, so that, that's kind of why we've aligned ourselves closely with the work that Baba's doing because of that focus on, on kind of empowering um, women and youth um, and we lend our, our kind of time in terms of um, running sensory workshops when we, when we kind of visit, uh, which we intend to do hopefully again next year. Um, and just spreading the word, you know, trying to do as much as we possibly can to ensure that our own co our own customers understand the the initiative of Hente del Futuro that we can contribute to financially as well through sales of our Kenyan and Tanzanian coffee. Um, so in terms of how how this relationship will be impacted by COVID, obviously. We really hope it won't be. Um, last year, you know, in terms of our sales of um, our purchase of Kenyan coffee, we purchased from the fly crop and therefore landed coffee in around August as opposed to slightly earlier in the year. So um, we kind of wouldn't usually be looking to, put, to make another purchase from Ucrop until around about nine to 12 months after that, that time. That gives us a bit of leeway to hopefully ensure that our purchases and our volumes won't be too affected by, by COVID. Um, and we, we, we kind of really look forward to talking about that with very soon um, and uh, and yeah but in between now and then we're just gonna be doing all that we possibly can to kind of share the word and, and share these stories really to ensure consumers are as informed as they possibly can be thank you very much Holly um, Brian would you like to share your comments please okay Thierry what I'm saying is uh, the government said the other day uh, we are, we've lost 1.2 million jobs here in Kenya as a result of COVID-19. So youths are affected here, and we are trying to say that uh, all is not lost. Uh, this is an opportunity for the youth also to venture more into agriculture. We have a lot of land to farm, and not just farming. We have a lot of land to farm on the good food. Uh, that is organic food, which we must advocate for, uh, for each and every farmer here in Kenya to produce good food that can be eaten uh, around. Now, on the community side around, uh, we are trying to impact the community around the youth also uh, in training them uh, on, on, on organic, organic food production which will impact them positively, okay? And uh, they'll know how to produce these things because as I have said, someone have to travel as much as eight kilometers from where we are to go to a market to get uh, some spinach, some kale, and some maize. Uh, these are staple food here in Kenya. So the idea is to try, not only the coffee farmers, we try and sensitize that this thing can be done uh, it's not uh, it's not it's not from the it's not from the blues and it can be done and we can show them how to do it so as to impact them positively. Over to you, Terry. Thank you, Brian, and apologies to participants for the quality of the um, uh, connection. Thank you to our panelists. I think Emily wanted to. Uh, share very very brief remarks Emily over to you okay thanks Thierry and thanks uh, once again to all the presenters um, it was a very rich conversation it would be very hard to wrap up everything in this one minute or 30 seconds uh, as I said we will be doing a, a, a blog to summarize the discussion and there's opportunities to continue through comments there uh, that will be shared with you um, I think we're in very interesting times and the, uh, I think what um, the current context 
is is doing is is forcing people to ask and not only how can we continue to do what we do uh, but what are the opportunities um, and so brian touched on opportunities for youth in the context of uh, mass unemployment um, and then there's opportunities to to rethink value chains and uh, global supply chains and in many cases people are looking to um, the indicators of resilience between global supply chains and, and more local supply chains and looking at what creates that resilience and, and food security uh, in times of crises. And so there's lots more to be discussed about how, um, how resilient value chains are, even when they are at the end of the spectrum that is looking to generate the most uh, in impact at the community and, and producer level. Um, as the, the project that we're working on and empowering producers and looking at agency, we're interested to see where metrics around, or perhaps not metrics, or qualitative uh, information around how agency and empowerment is is also featuring there how our producers themselves seeing their role in um, their agriculture and who they sell to and how they sell uh, looking at how they negotiate uh, and that type of question so this is rich uh, data and exchange for for those questions so i won't take i won't make further uh, comments in that regard. We can continue the discussion. We hope you'll all stay engaged with the project uh, and there'll be opportunities obviously um, to follow up with with Vava and North Star through their own contacts. Uh, this is a very micro case uh, in the whole of the coffee sector or the whole across agriculture and small-scale producers. So um we hope you've enjoyed a kind of zoom in to a particular case as well as through the medium of zoom uh and we look forward to continuing the discussion